Hey guys, I'm back. Uh, okay, we got the latest uh, Ghost 16 run pulled up to show you that that uh, planet's still there. I think it's a planet. You can see they're still pixelating it out. Still getting that reflection. Only a single beam on the Ghost 16. It, it presents itself around the same time, <clears throat> around 4, 4.15 UTC, which is 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And on the Himawari, it's uh, 11 p.m. Australian Time, so it's like exactly 12 hours. And it's pretty much staying in the same spot so far. I mean, I haven't noticed any discernible difference, although the beam looks like it might be a little stronger. <clears throat> we'll have to monitor that. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know if you've seen them reporting on uh, Hurricane Willa. I've heard reports that it's a cat three or four. Well, as usual, they're lying. Top wind speed's only around 41 miles per hour, so it's barely a tropical storm, actually. And it could uh, be a precip problem. Here's the precip. This is three hour, uh, three hour total. It's not too bad, really. Uh, if you bump it up a day, which this thing's going to move in pretty quick. There's Willa. We're not seeing any precip back here. We've got Vincent coming up behind it. Wind speed. This is tomorrow at 8 a.m. Okay, it's going up according to this model. <coughs> which it's the uh, icon her. So it's a hybrid between a one minute mean average and a 10 minute mean average. If you bump it down to the just a straight icon, this is the European model. Okay, it's still showing. It's getting up in the high 50, 60 mile an hour wind speeds. <clears throat> Precip. So that's 8 a.m. tomorrow by Wednesday at 8 a.m. It's going to be on shore and then Vincent's in there with it. So we got some, it's going to be a big rain event, <clears throat> if anything. I don't think the winds, well the winds, I mean 50, 60 mile an hour winds aren't nothing to sneeze at, of course. Here's the Ghost 16 uh, water vapor image. Now you can see the dry air with the vinegar in it, the acetic acid. It's targeting the uh, <clears throat> Willa and Vincent, which is right close by. And it's helping to erase these chem clouds, but you can see they're bombing it. You pause it and just go in for a close up here. All these highlight greens, <clears throat> those are going to be chem bombs for sure. And there's one there too. But anyway, I have to monitor that. Hopefully, enough of this. Uh, Acidic acid and dry air is going to swing in here and uh, choke this thing off before it becomes too big of a rain event. <clears throat> there was a trio of big earthquakes last night here in British Columbia. I think they're only showing us one on this USGS model. 
Yeah, well, 6.5, 6.6, I guess there's another one in there. There was actually three. And this, there's some fairly deep ones been popping off down here by Fiji lately too. And as you can see, there's a deep one there. Well, it's not super deep, but 119. It's pretty deep for this region. This is just in the last a uh, little bit more than 24 hours. Bump it down a little bit more. You can see got a lot of deep earthquakes in the asthenosphere. So all that pressure is welling up from underneath, and it has to go somewhere. <clears throat> I got a blog post on it. Uh, now frequent yet very rare deep earthquakes equal the earthquakes in diverse places that Jesus foretold a sign to the end. I always wondered why that scripture was translated in divers, divers places. And I looked it up, and uh, most of the translations just converted it to diverse or various places, but it's actually divers from the Greek, and divers go deep. So, and these deep earthquakes really didn't start until the last few years when the nemesis came on the picture. <clears throat> so, you can check that out if you want. And there's a good video from Bill Martin. I quit posting on uh, the Nemesis sighting. Okay, well, let's get to space weather. Here's Iswa, the latest run, last 300 frames. It's as far back as you can go. I did a little run through. There's really not much missing time, maybe 20 seconds here and there, just like yesterday. But you can see we still got a whole lot of pressure behind the Earth, a whole lot of electrons pretty much surrounding the whole planet. And as you can see, we still got that big electron bleed coming in, which yesterday it started around 9.36 UTC 21, 10.21. Looks like it abated for just a little bit, maybe three or four hours. Now you can see they're bleeding back in again. Over here, this is the high energy electrons. They're measured at 4,000 keV. These are the low energy electrons, which move slower. These ones move a lot faster. They zip around. See these blank spaces? I, I think that uh, that's just super high electrons that this uh, simulation can't even read. It's not set up to read anything that's that high. And you can see the blacks and the purples are coming in again. Like we saw a few months back. So it's uh, not good. And I got you up here on, uh, well, Geospace. Tried to load that today. It didn't load. That's all I got. You can't pull the slider. You can see we got a good bit of pressure now. Once again, front and back side of the earth on ace I don't know if you remember a couple days ago I mentioned that this nine hour eight nine hour gap started coming back online whereas it wasn't before and I theorized that uh, since it wasn't showing up on discover even though these two satellites are right up here at the same spot <clears throat> roughly the L1 Lagrange point that they must be pretty close to ACE and uh, that that nine hour gap would be going to diminish soon and <clears throat> maybe it might start showing up on discover well the nine hour gaps gone away now we got two gaps four hour gap and another four hour gap or a five hour gap and a four hour gap 
take it back seven days you'll see what I'm talking about see the gap went away in here whereas before it was always an eight nine hour gap for the last six months well it started out about four to five hour gap single gap around 2200 every day or around midnight then it went sort of snuck back to 2200 and went further out to 600 and then it disappeared for two days then it came back smaller gap there pretty close to little gap there then about six hour gap there then we got back up to the eight hour gaps on the 19th and 20th and 21st now it's <coughs> the gap showing up different again and the density numbers don't match either on these uh, ace and uh, Discover, which like I said, they're up at the same Lagrange point. The L1 position, which is a fixed orbiting position between the Earth and the Sun, it's about 930,000 miles out. <clears throat> the satellites are up there to give us an early warning for any type of big Sun activity, solar flares or CMEs that might just cause problems on Earth and especially on the satellites get like between a 15 and a <clears throat> one hour warning before it reaches our satellites in this geosynchronous orbit depending on the solar wind speed so the uh, ace and the discover are both up here but <clears throat> obviously they're not right next to each other because we're getting different readings on those there's my latest run from yesterday. I just wanted to show you a little bit more about the channel. <clears throat> if you click on the description box, you can see I got all these links under here that you can access. Many, many of which I cover in the video. <coughs> and I got some key um, YouTube videos. If they, if the link doesn't work because YouTube corrupts these links on me a lot of times, just um, Google the. Uh, title put it up here then uh, here's a link to my blog you can you can get that uh, earthquake link too from there this I thought was quite interesting yesterday Mary Greeley posted one about uh, the Arctic sky turning red awesome page Okay, you get the red auroras. They're uh, very rare. Very rare. As this guy explained in the video. And uh, some sup other super rare ones, which are purple. So let's we'll s wait and watch, see if we see those. And the way to YouTube's been doing me, you can't see all the comments unless you hit newest first. Then that opens it up. But in order to try to get some of these comments that I want to be shown, I put a reply underneath each one. And uh, I would suggest you go and hit the reply and, and check out these um, these links it's key I mean this is for real guys it's gonna happen um, it's all lining up with the uh, biblical prophecy check out my blog just say a little prayer like, like God I know I, I can't really comprehend what this dude's saying but just ask the Lord to open your understanding and uh, he will I guarantee it so here's the um, latest once again for the goes. And there it is. <clears throat> it's flashing through. I'll post something again later today on the Himwari. So anyway, God bless. Thanks for listening. 
Peace and uh, I'm out.